Hi boys and girls. Well, today we're going to start a new lesson. And our next few lessons are going to be about a very special person by the name of Moses. So let's just start right away, okay? This is, this, he, Moses is, was a great, great leader of Israel and in the Bible. Yep, so we're going to learn a lot of lessons about Moses. You're going to really like Moses. But we're going to start when he was first born, okay? So let's get started. All the Israelite people who are descendants of, you remember when uh, Jacob had a dream and he wrestled with a man and he said, your name's no longer Jacob, but Israel. And he promised his, he, he would inherit all the land and that his descendants would be as the stars. Well, Jacob had a lot of descendants, and their name were Israelites. They're descendants of Israel. And so the new king, there was a new king. Joseph had died, and all his brothers had died, and the Israelites were living in the land, and the new king didn't like it because they were a lot millions so he was afraid that they were going to try to take his throne and they would be in power and in control and so let's see what the king pharaoh wanted to do the new king of egypt pharaoh there must be more than two million israelites he said what if they try to take my kingdom away from me i know what i'll do said the king I'll make them slaves. Then they will have to work so hard they won't have time to fight or the power to fight. They'll be too tired against me. If I don't do this, they will join my enemies and go to war against me. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They had to carry heavy bricks, while cruel masters watched over them. They couldn't even take a few minutes to rest. That's how hard they worked, the Israelites, as slaves. The taskmasters made life miserable for them. But God, but God, was taking care of the people of Israel. And instead of fewer people, more people were being born all the time. Hmm. The Egyptians were alarmed. They were getting nervous. They were multiplying. The Israelites, they just kept making more and more babies. Better make them work harder, King Pharaoh said. The new king didn't like the Israelites. He wanted to get rid of them. He may have thought if the taskmasters worked them to death, there would be fewer of them left to fight. But more and more people were born to the Hebrew parents. The Israelites were called Hebrews. So they were, their parents were called Hebrew parents. That means that's what they were called, Hebrew. But they were from Israel. They were descendants from Jacob, from Israel. I know what I'll do, he said. I will have all the little Hebrew boys killed. He was mean, mean, mean. As soon as they are born, I'll have them killed. Then they can never grow up to be soldiers to overthrow his kingdom. Parents, adults, does this story sound familiar? Having all the little boys and girls killed? Even up to the point of death? Mm, what an awful thing, awful, awful thing for the king to do. The king commanded the Egyptians to throw all the new, newborn Hebrew boys into the river. 
into the Nile River. So they were drowned. Tell, that's just evil, boys and girls. Somebody that would want to hurt anybody. But they were taking the newborn baby boys and putting them in the river to drown. Somebody's heart has got the devil. That's just pure evil. What an awful thing for the king to do. The king commanded the e Egyptians to throw those babies into the Nile River. But there was one Hebrew mother named Jochebed. Jochebed. She looked at her little boy. I'm going to turn you to the board, okay? She looked at her little boy and said to her husband, Amram, look at our sweet baby. Isn't he beautiful? We will never, never let him be thrown into the river like the king commanded. I have a plan, Jacobed said. I'll hide him so the king's soldiers won't find him and kill him. But the baby grew and grew. And now he didn't cry in a little voice, but in a big voice. The soldiers will hear him cry, said his mother, and they will take him away. But I have another plan. So, what's going on? She had baby, and she didn't want the king to get the baby, right? Because if they did, they would have thrown him into the river. Well, she had a plan. Hang on with Miss Pam. I'm changing the boards. So we've got a new board. And you know, when God gives you a plan, there's always something good going to happen. If it's from God. But it's got to be from God. That's why you study His Word and you pray. So you talk and He listens and then... You listen, and he'll talk to you mm -hmm. in his word, and sometimes in your prayer time. So, always remember that. When you study the word, what's the word? The Holy Bible. That's God's word. All of these pages, God spoke through men, and they wrote it down. And this is why God talks to you today. And he can talk to you also through your dreams and your prayer time. So, but you have to be real close to God to understand. So you try to do that. And if you draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. He promises us that. So let's talk more about what Jochebed's going to do. All right. So Jochebed said, I have a plan. So what she did was she told, she built this little basket. And I'm about to tell you all about it, but let me get my board set up here, okay? Just bear with Miss Pam. It takes a few minutes to get everything in position. I'll make him a little boat. And it's going to make, be made out of papyrus reeds and tar. And put the baby in it and let it float in the river. And that's just what she did. She made a little boat, then she hid him. She hid him in the tall bulrushes at the river's edge. Have you ever been to a river and you see it looks like weeds growing out of the river or the lake? Well, those are bulrushes. And then you know what she did? She told his big sister, Miriam, her name was Miriam. She said, now Miriam, you watch after that basket, okay? And Miriam watched, and she watched. And I'm going to turn you back to the board to see what happens. Here's 
Miriam. Here's the basket. You see the basket down here? Oops. See the baby in the basket? Can you see the baby in the basket down there? And we're going to cover him back up because we don't want the soldiers to see him, right? That's what her mom, his mom, Jochebed, wanted to cover him up and hide him in the, see the bulrushes? Yeah, those are the bulrushes. It's like the weeds in the water. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. As Miriam watched, the princess, the king's own daughter, the king's daughter and her maid came walking along the river's edge. The princess come to bathe in the water. Every day she liked to come down to the river and she would take a bath in the water. Look, she said to her maid, see that little boat in the water? Bring it to me. When she opened the basket, there he is. Look there. She opened the basket and there was the baby. The baby started to cry. Poor little baby, said the princess. I will take you home with me and you can be my very own baby. When Miriam heard this, she ran up to the princess. She was hiding, remember? She ran up to the princess. That's his big sister, Miriam. She said, Shall I get you a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? Remember, they were descendants of Jacob. They were Hebrew. And these are Egyptian ladies. They live in Egypt. But these were the slave people, the Hebrews. Shall I get you a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? Oh, yes, please do, said the princess. And who did she run home and get? The baby's own mother, Jochebed. When Jochebed came, the princess said, Now take this child home with you and nurse it. I'll pay you well. So the baby went home where he was born, right back to live with his own family. Jochebed probably said, Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. I shall teach my baby all about you so that when he grows up, he will want to love you and obey you. Well, the baby stayed home for a long time, and when he was older, he stayed with his mom, his real mom, for a long time. Jochebed, her name was Jochebed, remember? And his real father was Amram, and his sister was Miriam, that's right. Well, he stayed with her for a long, long time, but when he got older, she promised the princess and she took the baby back to the palace to live with the princess because she, the princess didn't know that Jochebed was the real mom. God just worked it out so that she got to keep the baby and raise the baby. But when he got older, he had to go back to the, live with the princess in the palace. It took great faith, great faith in God and much courage. It took a lot of courage for his mom to do that to put that little baby in a basket in the river. Hmm? It may seem like a small thing to hide a baby in a little boat, but God's plan was to use his servant, that little baby. That little baby's gonna grow up, grow up to be a great, great man of God. Mm -hmm. His name's gonna be Moses. He changed the whole nation he changed the whole world. We still learn about Moses today, and we don't live in Egypt. We live in the United States of America, a great country. But we still learn about Moses, and he teaches us lessons. So God used that baby to grow up to be a great man named Moses. And he shows us how no matter what, you can't stop God's plan. Nope. Remember, Miss Pam's talked to you about Joseph and his plan? And he's got a plan for Moses, too. 
Oh, it's a great, great plan. You're going to see in the days ahead, we're going to talk about it. So you come back next time and we'll talk more about Moses and what God does with Moses, okay? It's a great story and a great leader. We all want to try to strive to lead like Moses led. Okay, boys and girls, that's the story for today. Just about the little baby in the bulrushes and how God took that little baby and the princess is going to be his mother, but yet she had his real mother take care of him and raise him because the princess, you know who the princess's dad was? Her daddy is the king. Her daddy is the king that wants to kill all the babies. That's why she couldn't take the baby home with her because she knew if she did, her dad would have it killed because he knew it wasn't her baby. It was a little Israelite baby, a little Hebrew baby. So we will talk more about Moses next time, okay? You come back and we will talk about how God used him mightily for the children of Israel. Okay, let's have a word of prayer and I'll let you go. All right. Father God, we just thank you for what you're showing us in your, your book, your book of history, your book of stories, your holy Bible. And Lord, how you take each person that's in your book and you have a plan. And we thank you for the plan you had for Moses as a baby. And Lord, that how, no matter what, how, how much, no matter the evil, even that king that was so bad that killed all those babies, Lord, you saved that baby because you had a great plan for him. And Lord, how you're saving babies today, Father, because you have a great plan for them. And so, Lord, I thank you for each boy and girl that's listening to this story time today and in the future days ahead. And Lord, help them to know that you've got a great plan for them. And that's why they're listening. And that's why they're here. So Father, continue to lead and guide us and direct us through your holy Bible and your precious stories in it. Thank you for, once again for Moses and, and what you're teaching us about him and through him. And thank you for Jesus who came and gave his life so that we can call you Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls. I will see you next time. And we will talk about how God uses Moses and speaks to Moses. Okay? You guys go out and have a beautiful day. And remember, that's right. Miss Pam loves you so, so much. But God loves you even more than that. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.